Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin and we're checking out the new Droid 2 Turbo today. This is a phone manufactured by Motorola but sold exclusively through Verizon Wireless here in the United States. In other countries, this is called the Moto X Force. And uh, what makes this one different than their uh, current flagship, the Moto uh, X Style or Pure Edition, is that uh, this one has what everyone's talking about, the shatterproof screen, a slightly faster processor, and a bigger battery. So it's kind of the deluxe edition, if you will, of the Moto X Pure Edition. However, here in the United States, uh, this is only really going to work on Verizon's network because while it supports some of the other uh, phone bands that are out there on the 3G side, the 4G network looks pretty much limited to the bands that uh, Verizon supports here in the United States. So uh, the Moto X style slash pure edition actually has uh, pretty much global compatibility. This one is going to be ra rather limited uh, in what it might work with. So we're going to compare this quite a bit throughout this video to the Moto X style because they are very similar phones. And in fact, I'm going to point you towards this review because I covered a lot of the Motorola specific features in that video, such as voice commands and gestures uh, that are identical on this phone. So check out that video if you want to learn more about uh, some of the unique features that Motorola brings to the table. So let's talk first, though, uh, about the display on here before we get into other things, because uh, this is uh, a little bit different than the other Motorola phone. This has an OLED display, uh, and as a result, and I think because they also have all this anti-shattering technology built into this uh, display also, uh, you get a little bit of a color difference here when you are uh, looking at the phone from different angles here. So head on, it looks fine, uh, but when you start looking at it from the side a little bit, you get a little bit of a greenish hue to it. Depending on uh, what your white balance is on your display, it might look a little bit blue, but to my eyes, it looks a little bit uh, green looking at it here. So that was one thing I noticed. Another thing that I noticed is that the uh, entire bezel kind of lights up when you're in a darkened environment on the white phone here. The backlight actually bleeds through the bezel. Uh, which is a little bit distracting for me. I don't know if that was something that they did on, on purpose or intentionally, um, but it was definitely something uh, that I noticed when I was playing with the phone uh, in a darkened room there. So just keep that in mind. This is a 5.4 inch screen. Uh, so it's a little bit smaller than uh, the 5.7 inch you'll get on the new Moto X, but it uh, has the same resolution. So it is uh, 1440 by 2560. It does look pretty nice, especially when you're looking at it directly. Uh, and it's got uh, 540 pixels per inch. Uh, so it's definitely the retina quality display. What's interesting is that uh, this one is 520 pixels per inch. I can't tell the difference. So I think when you get above 400 or something, it's going to be very hard to kind of discern a difference in uh, overall display quality, but it does have that quad HD display. Uh, this has three gigabytes of RAM and a Snapdragon 810. Uh, that compares to the 808 chip on the other Motorola phone. Uh, and it's also uh, got a little bit faster gaming performance too. I ran the uh, 3D Mark benchmark earlier today. And we got a score of 25,634 uh, with 174.9 frames per second in its first graphics test, 145 on the second one, uh, and a physics score of just about 40 frames per second. So it definitely has a uh, similar processing speed to the other Motorola phone, but a slightly better graphical performance. If you're running a lot of those high-end, uh, heavy-duty games, I think you're going to have a little bit of a better experience on this phone uh, than you will on the other one. Now, unlike the Moto X phone, you're not going to get stereo sound out of the front of the device. So this one does look similar in that it's got a similar looking speaker up there. Uh, you're only going to hear sound when you're playing back music or videos or games out of this speaker down here. You're not going to get that stereo separation that you get on the other phone. So this speaker up here is strictly when you are uh, using the phone up to your ear. It will, you know, of course, play the phone call out of there, but you're not going to get a stereo sound out of the front of this. At least in my testing, it doesn't seem to do that. I only hear it out of, I believe, this speaker here. So uh, it sounds fine, but it's just not going to be uh, in stereo as you're playing things back. The cameras on here, though, are excellent. This is the same camera that's on the other Motorola phone. Uh, 21 megapixels, really, really nice image quality. You get some nice bokeh, some really decent sharp photographs out of it. Uh, it does do 4K video also, so you can see a couple of sample images here. And I'll point you to a, a video that I took in 4K with the other Motorola phone. It's the same exact camera, so you're going to get uh, the same exact results out of it. And they've done a really nice job improving their cameras on these phones significantly. And I'm really, really quite fond of that camera. Uh, this one also has the 5 megapixel front facing selfie camera and a flash up front too. Uh, so you get that as well. Uh, battery life is pretty good on here. So, uh, what, you know, battery life is a very hard thing because it's different for everybody. So what I do typically is take the phone and use it uh, like I would use my normal everyday phone to see how I uh, do at the end of the day. So my um, other Motorola phone here, the Pure Slash Style Edition, I got uh, pretty much through the entire workday up to about 6 or 7, maybe 8 p.m. when it really got 
uh, pretty low in its battery capacity. Uh, this one got me through to about 10 or 11 p.m. So uh, using it like I use my phones, I, I was getting a little bit more battery life, probably about 20% more, which actually lines up with uh, the 20% additional capacity that it has. So this has a 3,760 uh, milliamp hour battery compared to 3,000 on this one. So you get uh, pretty much that amount of capacity in actual usage over the course of the day. You'll get longer standby times perhaps in the other phone, but uh, most people use these phones and when you use a phone, it's going to drain quicker. So of course, YouTube videos, games, other things that tax the processor more uh, will drain it faster. It does give you though a turbo charger in the box so you can charge the phone uh, very quickly when you are running low. All right, now it's time for the moment of truth. Is this phone shatterproof? And I dropped it uh, pretty much flat onto concrete like so, and uh, it's held up very, very well. Now, I did a couple different scenarios here. Uh, one was dropping it flat onto concrete. Another test I did was one where I put some pebbles down because typically my phones have shattered when I drop them onto asphalt or onto uh, a concrete sidewalk, perhaps, where there's a pebble uh, kind of in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, and I pretty much replicated those uh, past experiences in my testing, and I did get uh, this mark on here from uh, one of those pebble tests. So it didn't shatter the screen, but it definitely took a little bite out of it. Uh, so it's not going to shatter on you, but you are going to get permanent damage. You got another little uh, area over here too that you can see. Uh, so the screen will get damaged. It's not indestructible, uh, but those kinds of things would easily shatter my iPhone screen. Uh, and this one, they're just kind of digging a little chunk out of it. So that's actually an improvement, I think. And it's definitely uh, living up to the claim that they've made that this is a shatterproof phone. Uh, the phone will get banged up though. So, uh, you know, you will damage the corners and the backing and everything. So you probably want to use a case with it also, but uh, the screen screen is probably going to hold up a lot better uh, over time, especially if you are prone to dropping your phone uh, than other phones will. And that's pretty much the worst you're going to see, at least in the testing that uh, I've done over the last couple of days. So that is the Droid 2 Turbo. It's also known as the Moto X Force in other countries. Very expensive though, comparatively. It's $624 uh, as you see it. Uh, that's with 32 gigabytes of onboard storage also. Uh, by comparison, the Moto X Pure Edition or the style, depending on which country you're in, uh, starts at $399 with 16 gigabytes of storage. Uh, both of these support SD cards. They actually have a neat little mechanism on their uh, SIM card tray for those. So you can uh, get a really decent phone for $399 that's compatible with every carrier versus this one that costs a lot more that only works on Verizon. So you have to kind of figure out uh, whether or not the shatterproof screen is that important to you because uh, you might get a very good experience out of this phone uh, for less money and have more freedom to move uh, around to different carriers or use it overseas if you're traveling quite a bit. But uh, beyond that though, very durable, really holds up quite well, performs very nicely. Uh, just that backlight bleed issue is a little distracting for me and I wish it had uh, stereo speakers on the front to bring it in line more with the other Motorola phone. But uh, beyond that, it's a very high quality phone and something that I can recommend if you are planning to stick with Verizon. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.